Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff. He's the chairman of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Congressman Schiff, I want to get your reaction to what the president had to say today and what you just heard Chuck Schumer say, which is we're here because the president promised Mexico would pay for this wall, but now he wants American taxpayers to pay. Well, my predominant reaction watching it was uh, sad uh, to see the office of the presidency brought so low. When you think about uh, other people who have occupied that office and the addresses they have given to rally the country together to rise uh, in the face of some national challenge and then to watch that display uh, was just painful. And Chuck Schumer is exactly right. The reason we are where we are tonight is the president promised uh, his supporters over and over and over again that Mexico was going to build this big, beautiful wall. And that was a fraudulent promise. But nonetheless, he made it and kept repeating it. Now he can't deliver it. And he's asking the taxpayers to pay for it. Well, they don't want to pay for it. Uh, Congress doesn't want to approve it. The American people don't support it. Uh, and so we had this rather pathetic display tonight. Uh, we need to reopen the government. We can continue this debate over the president's wall, but not do it at a time where he is effectively holding the American people, federal employees, those who do business with the government, those who need government services, uh, hostage to this broken commitment. Uh, as I revealed uh, earlier at the beginning of this program, the president also used tonight as a fundraising event for his reelection campaign. And in the email that he sent to his supporters telling them there was a 9 p.m. deadline uh, for their contributions, uh, he lied to them very clearly, uh, fraudulently represented the contributions as being uh, money that they would contribute to him to secure the border. Uh, then this being Donald Trump, uh, after the speech, he sent out another email to supporters who had not yet contributed by the 9 p.m. deadline and extended the deadline for them to contribute. And so it seems structurally, and including the content of the speech tonight, this was, from beginning to end, a Trump campaign event, including a public fundraiser. Well, that may very well be. And uh, perhaps next time you'll have operators standing by and a phone number across the bottom of your screen. Um, but look, this is how the president operates. Uh, it's all about him. Uh, it's all about now his reelection uh, and uh, the suffering that he's imposing on hundreds of thousands of people who aren't going to get their paychecks, who can't pay their bills. Uh, well, that's just too bad. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we are going to be sending bill after bill uh, to the Senate. Senate passed bills uh, to reopen the government. I think the pressure to do so is going to become uh, overwhelming on the Republicans. Uh, and as you say, uh, we're seeing defection after defection now. Uh, it's my hope that we can break this impasse soon. Congressman, I want to get your reaction to the developments in the Paul Manafort case today. Uh, we discovered uh, that the special prosecutor has found uh, that Paul Manafort uh, was in contact with Russians, sharing polling information and other Trump campaign information uh, with Russians. It raises the question, was that information that Paul Manafort, that polling information uh, that Paul Manafort was supplying to the Russians, did the Russian hackers then, uh, who were operating in the United States, did they then use that to try use that polling information to try to influence the vote in the ways that could turn the Electoral College in Donald Trump's favor? Well, that is a profound question. And at this point, we simply don't know the answer. Uh, what did a Russian affiliated intelligence uh, person, at least uh, in the view of the special counsel, want with Trump polling data? And one explanation may be, look, they're in the midst of a social media campaign. Uh, to help uh, Donald Trump uh, win the presidency. Uh, and it's useful to have some of the campaign's uh, information on their polling numbers and where they're polling well and who they're polling well among and who they need to make up ground. Uh, it, it also could be something uh, very different. It could be an effort by the Trump campaign to show that the president or the candidate then was doing better than the other polls suggested. We just don't know, but we certainly need to find out. It goes, I think, to the very issue of whether and to what degree and how uh, Trump campaign personnel may have been either colluding or conspiring with the Russians.
And what do you see today in the indictment of Natalia Veselnitskaya that, that happened today? And, and this was outside of the special prosecutor's jurisdiction. This was uh, the U.S. attorney in Manhattan bringing this indictment. She was the woman uh, who helped arrange that meeting and attended that meeting at Trump Tower, uh, in which she was promising uh, basically dirt on Hillary Clinton from the Russian government. She's indicted in an unrelated case uh, to the campaign, a uh, case that, uh, uh, that pre-existed the campaign. But uh, could there be some linkage here? Well, one thing that it, it certainly shows, Lawrence, uh, that is relevant to the Trump Tower meeting and the issues at the heart of the Mueller investigation and her own work in the Intelligence Committee is that this claim that she had made that she's not a government attorney, she has really little or no affiliation with the Russian government, is bogus. Uh, the reason that she was indicted for obstruction of justice in that Prevazon case is that uh, she put forward a pleading that she said essentially that she had no part in producing. That was a statement of the Russian government uh, absolving the Russians of complicity in this money laundering scheme uh, when we would later find out that in fact uh, she wrote this in combination, working uh, in coordination with the Russian government and the Russian uh, general prosecutor. Uh, so it certainly now is a consistent portrait we're getting of Veselnitskaya that that meeting in Trump Tower, her work on the Magnitsky Act, her effort to uh, do away with these sanctions uh, that we've imposed on the Russians, uh, this is being done as a part of her work on behalf of the Russian government. And that, of course, raises the stakes for that meeting in Trump Tower. Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.